session as we conduct this meeting. Father, we thank you for our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Sheriff, if you will, please the flag. Yeah. Would you please stand and place our flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Guys, y'all have had a chance to look over the minutes from the previous meeting. It was our November the 26th uh, regular scheduled fiscal court meeting. This time I need a motion and a second to approve. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, call the roll, please. Master Combs? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Bakken? Yes. Judge Taylor? Yes. Uh, next is the uh, treasurer's report. Good morning, Glenn. Uh, your report is in your drop box. Um, this report goes through November 30th, 2019. And our total fund balance of all funds is $5,528,062.82. Um, that is what is sitting in our checking accounts. It doesn't mean that's a free reserve. Those are dedicated funds to pay the bills. Our revenues uh, for our general fund are at 30.1%. Our expenditures are at 35.1%. Our road fund, our revenues are at 77.4%. Our expenditures are at 38. Our jail fund, our revenues are at 35.8%. Our expenditures are at 44%. LGA, our revenues are at 58.9%. Our expenditures are at zero. CSEP fund, our revenues are at 4.2%. Our expenditures are at 4.5. Revenues for 911 is 44.1%. Our expenditures are 31.4. And our health fund, our revenues are at 43.8%. Our expenditures are at 23.8%. Does anybody have any questions? I have a question mm -hmm. on page 13. Of the claims or of the report? I, I'm sorry, it's on the next section. It's, the next section. it's on what? It's on the, um, hang on just a second. It had to do with the home incarceration monitoring and the Supplemental satellite tracking was about five thousand uh dollars. -huh. Yes. I'm just curious, is that software? Is that hardware? Is it bracelets? That's the bracelets. bracelets. That's actually right. paying the for the bracelets each month. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Yes. Does anybody else have any other questions? Good. Everybody good? Thanks, Glenn. Appreciate it. You might as well stay up here, I think. Oh, yeah. Uh, first order of business today is the second reading of Ordinance 1922. This is a budget amendment for the county, for the road department. The budget amendment is for the road department, uh, the bridge and emergency state reimbursement. We have $314,308 uh, brought in more than what we had budgeted, and those are from projects that we've done that we've already spent out the money and we're getting reimbursed for. <coughs> uh, truck license distribution come in $25,988 more. Road reimbursements uh, come in $35,040 more from where we did some work and City of Berea reimbursed us. A uh, total of $375,336. And those are all reimbursements, right? Glenn? Yes. Do I have a motion for second reading of Ordinance 1922 Budget Amendment for the Road Department? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion <coughs> from the magistrates? Uh, this was advertised for second reading, so it requires uh, or it allows for public comment. Is there any public comment uh, for second reading of Ordinance 1922 Budget Amendment for the Road Department at this time? Seeing none, please call the roll, Clerk Barger. Master Combs? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Bakken? Yes. Judge Sale? Yes. Uh, next, second reading, uh, second reading board is 1923. This is the insurance premium tax. Go ahead. Ordinance number 1923, an ordinance imposing a license fee or tax upon insurance companies for the privilege of engaging in the business of insurance within the county of Madison. Establishing a license fee or tax upon insurance companies at the rate of 5% of the premiums collected on all types of insurance, excluding health and life insurances. 
establishing an effective date of July 1st, 2020, and a delinquency date 31 days after the end of each calendar quarter, establishing a penalty interest charge for any license fee or tax not paid on or before the due date, which shall be the tax interest rate defined by KRS 131.010 and published in the annual local government premium tax bulletin issued by the Department of Insurance, establishing a 10% penalty for a license fee or tax not paid within 30 days after due date, and requiring insurance companies subject to the license fee or tax to furnish quarterly and annual reports required by KRS 91A.080 and 806-KAR-2-095. Thank you, Glenna. At this time, do I have a motion and a second for the second reading of Ordinance 1923, Insurance Premium Tax? So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any Let's, discussion? Who was the second? I didn't get it. John. John. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got a couple of questions. Well, I actually got three or four <clears throat> pages, but I'm going to limit it to two or three. Glenna, when at our last court meeting, you said that you anticipated this to bring in about two million. About two and a half million. We're, I mean, We're how based, do you arrive at that? It's a, it's a pure guesstimate, and we have talked to the uh, Kentucky Department of Insurance, and they will tell you that there's no way for them to know exactly how much you're going to bring in because every county is different. It's based on autos, <coughs> RVs, boats, so every county is different on how many they have in their county. Um, but we compared, compared to uh, similar counties of size, um, same rate, um, and they and Bullet County is it Bullet? Bullet County. Yeah. Bullet County was the most comparable to us, and they bring in two point nine million. What uh, what cost will that be to the government to collect? It? It's no cost. The the insurance. Well, the insurance not going to do it for you. The insurance companies. It doesn't cost us anything. No, I, I know it doesn't cost us, but I'm saying the insurance will charge to collect that, correct? The insurance, according to the law, the insurance company is allowed to charge up to 1% fee for administration. Now, a lot of insurances do not charge that because to try to keep their rates down. I know I checked with Kentucky Farm Bureau. They do not charge that 1%. Some insurance companies decide to charge it. Some don't. And that would be on, well, that would be on top of the five. I mean, if they charge one, you actually will be paying six if they charge one. If they charge one. But they may not charge one. Yeah. But they're not going to do it free. Uh, it, it depends on, you know, Kentucky Farm Bureau does it for free because they want to keep their rates down and be competitive to, competitive to other insurance companies. Well, I have Farm Bureau, and I, and, and I talked to the agent, and, uh, you know, Bullet, Bullet County sued them because they had the city and the county mixed up. But, you know, surely we got a handle on that now, haven't we? What's in the city and what's in the county? We have maps that can that are going to be posted on the website that any insurance agent can get to at any time. Yeah. That'll tell them what, if they're in the city or the county. So, but when you say say other than the State Farm, one percent the max they can charge? Yes. Okay, so they can't go up. No, sir. Okay, well. And then, and then that's it's collected by the Department of Insurance too, correct? No, um, department they report to the Department of Insurance, they report to the but the insurance. companies actually send the checks straight to us. To us, okay. Besides us depositing it into the account, we it doesn't cost the county any more. Doesn't cost us any more labor or anything to collect this. It's not going to We're not going to have to add, add an employee or anything like that. No, John, make point. So that's one percent of the tax collected. Yes. Not going from five to six percent. Right. So if you pay five dollars tax, it's going to be another dollar, not another yeah. total. Just like what we yes. commission well, on ours. Well, it'd be whatever. Yeah, on what they collect. Right. It's commission on ours, but it sounds it can get confusing that it's going to be really six percent. Yeah, five. it's not on it's the total not, premium. It's right. just on the tax paid. Larry, you have anything else? Uh, that's enough. Okay. Anybody else? Before we open it up for public comment. I've got something I'd like to read, Judge. Okay. We're here today to address a problem, which is the war on drugs. Most of you came to learn about a proposed insurance premium fee. I'll address that in a minute. 
Five years ago, Judge Taylor commissioned a jail task force made up of a broad spectrum of professionals, elected officials, Madison County residents, just as yourself. After studying the jail possible solutions for a year, this task force determined and recommended to the physical court that our jail needs to be enlarged to 600 beds, expandable to 900 beds. Why? To combat the opioid explosion that has taken over our county, an explosion that has skyrocketed the number of inmates in our county jail, of which 85% are repeat drug offenders. I was elected as Magistrate District 4 in part because I campaigned to provide the training, equipment, and resources required to support our Sheriff's Department to combat the war on drugs. Equipment such as bulletproof vests, backup weapons, Narcan for our deputies should they become exposed to the harms of walking into a meth lab, being exposed substance from arresting uh, drug addicts and dealers, equipment to support the very individuals that put their lives on the line each and every day and night so you can work, live, and play in a safe neighborhood. Public safety should be priority one. Being able to go to sleep at night without the fear of someone breaking into your cars or homes to steal your property or worse, take your life to pay for their next fix high, that should be a priority. Judge Taylor recognized how serious this epidemic was four years ago. He also realized that the epidemic was caused by an illness called addiction. He knew that we would have to combat this epidemic differently than anything we'd seen before in Madison County. This physical court developed a plan, a healing center. But how do you pay for such a plan? The only way we could, a tax increase. However, our vision for a better Madison County was not your vision. Our residents with a loud outcry said no. We listened. There would be no healing center in Madison County. However, the war on drugs raged on. Our jail became overcrowded. Our jailer, Doug Thomas, begged for help. The war raged on. Fast forward, our jail is now over 30 years old in serious need of repair. We need a new plan. We need a new jail. The plan was to build a new jail. But jails cost money, and at today's prices, they cost a lot of money. We needed to raise our revenue. Yes, 30 years ago, funds could have been set aside to budget for a new jail. No one saw it coming. We have a new jail, they said then. Guess what? The war on drugs rages on. We tried to determine the best way to attack this issue. We need to raise funds fast, but we need a way that will be fair to all residents of Madison County. So we decided on a real estate property tax. All residents, whether Bria, Richmond or County would pay. But again, you said no. You said we need to address the mental issues faced with addiction. How soon we forget. You said no to a healing center just one year prior. When my phone blew up one year ago, I told you and I heard you loud and clear that there would be no healing center. But I also told you, regardless of who got elected, they would have to build a new jail. You said okay. Yet, here we are today. And guess what? The war on drugs rages on. Now, plan B is not so fair. Insurance premium tax can only be applied to county residents. Not a good plan. The war on drugs rages on. I want to thank the members of the Madison County Watch Group at this time. I want to thank you because you opened my eyes to some degree. You forced me to learn what property physical court on, owns. I already knew about some, but I didn't know about others. You said we should sell county property. You were right. We listened, and we will be selling county property immediately. Thank you all for forcing that decision. You were right. I also want to thank you for your inputs and ideas. Prison reform, while not within the direct control of this physical court, will continue to be on the front burner as we keep our open dialogue with our representatives in Frankfurt. 
Feed collection to our county for services rendered, ensuring that everyone operating and doing business within the county has the proper business license to do so and pays their proper tax. Raising livestock on county-owned property. While on the surface, it sounds like a good idea, yet there are so many hidden costs, such as manpower to care for animals, feed during the winter, minerals, salt, medicine, transportation costs to and from the market, not to mention the cost of fencing that would have to be provided to keep cattle out of residential property that borders it. And last but certainly not least, any farmer would gladly tell you it's a gamble at best. When to buy, when to sell, fluctuating markets. We don't need to be in the rental business. We don't need to be in the cattle business. Jail bond reform. Now that's a good idea, which I will pursue with our legislators personally. Many of you said by email, text, phone calls to cut services and downsize. Well, you're right again, but what does that really mean? It means this, and don't forget it, this is important. It means jobs. You're talking about jobs for your family, your friends, your neighbors. And remember, as all this time has passed, the war on drugs rages on. We can't build a new jail. At this point, we're only looking at raising enough money to pay for seeing our inmates to other counties, as well as imminent repairs that are looming at our own jail. We are spending our once $2 million savings at an alarming rate. If no change is made, it will be gone, as our treasurer has stated many times, by July 2020. The war on drugs rages on. Oh, I'm sorry, I almost forgot about our pension crisis still out there, as well as the loss of a thousand jobs at the, depo at the depot immediate after the last chemical weapon has been destroyed. Finally, I want to say this. For once, I agree with some of our other magistrates. I'm against this insurance premium tax. However, given everything that I just said and knowing everything I know today, it would be financially irresponsible as a member of this physical court to vote no. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Anybody else at this time? Bill Ray, you got any good ideas? You were in there 12 years. You're the shape we're in. You you're, you're reading it up on Facebook with ideas. I want to hear what your ideas are this morning. Thanks for saying that. We'll uh, open it up for public comment. This is a second reading of an ordinance, uh, 1923, on the insurance premium tax. Um, at this time, anybody that would like to get up and address the court, feel free. Uh, Shane, if you don't mind, just... Uh, I'm Shane O'Donnelly. I live at 927 West Chester Way. Um, I think, first of all, I watched the last meeting probably half a dozen times, and I just have a couple of comments about things I observed. Uh, uh, first of all, Mr. Tudor, you you uh, you said your wife was assaulted in a grocery store. I think that's that's awful. I hope she filed a report. And that's being investigated because that that shouldn't happen. Um, some other things I thought were a little illuminating. I think uh, speak to why I'm here today. Um, you also claim that very few other counties actually don't have an insurance premium tax. So what, what does very few mean? I don't know the number, Shane, but the other counties have different options to raise revenue that we, Madison County mm -hmm. doesn't. Mm -hmm. Okay, the actual number is 77 counties. Two thirds of Kentucky doesn't use this vehicle. All those counties, they have the same pension obligations as we do. They have to pay for inmates whether they have a jail or not. But they don't use this. And I think part of it is because um, the way the ordinance is written, it's written as a tax for the privilege of providing insurance. The government requires us by law to purchase insurance and then to tack on, tack on a tax for the privilege of doing something that if we don't do, People with guns are going to take us to jail. That just doesn't seem doesn't seem fair. Um, <clears throat> is it fair for the cities of this county to charge that tax, and the county is not receiving any benefit from that? I'm not a resident of the city. I'm just saying. Have you looked into that? 
I'm not. I, I don't. I don't have. A, I don't have a voice. And they, they don't represent me, and so I don't have a decision over what the cities do. I do know that being a resident of the city, even with their tax, their premiums are a heck of a lot cheaper than mine, because I'm on ISO 10. I live more than five miles from the staff uh, fire department, so my rates are through the roof, and that's not going to change. Um, the other point I'd like to make is. I think you got. I think you, uh, you gentlemen, are operating with incomplete information. Um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Combs, he accurately asked last week. You know, how much is this going to raise? It's an intelligent <coughs> point, um, and you know, we heard ranges from 100,000 to 8 million. The guesstimate was two, uh, two, two and a half million. Um, I think in this day and age, we can do better than a guesstimate. I mean, an, an economist worth their salt could give a firm number within 48 hours. And I think it's more uh, applicable to work backwards. You know, figure out what your budget shortfall is, and then figure out what the rate is to generate the revenue to meet that shortfall. Um, you asked, what's the collection fee? I said it was 1%. I just looked it up on DOI's website. It's 2%, up to 2%, or 15% of the total premium paid. I found that out in two minutes, sitting in that chair. So I don't know that you really have complete information to make this permanent decision right now. And my final point is, whether you've passed this today or you pass it on the deadline on March 23rd, it's still going to go into effect July 1. You have three months to engage an economist, to get a more precise number. You have three months to fully research how these other counties, how the two-thirds of the state's counties are meeting their obligations without using this taxing vehicle. I can give you one explanation for that. Mm -hmm. Just uh, Laurel County, Pulaski County, they bring in almost $10 million in occupational tax. And the reason they can do that is they collect occupational tax on the entire city and county not just out of the county. Because of our population, there is a KRS, because of our population of our city, we're not allowed to collect it in the city. And we're also capped at 1%. So we can't raise our occupational tax and we can't collect inside the city. There's a big difference between $10 million in occupational tax and $3.5 million in occupational tax. So some of those counties don't have to go to an insurance premium tax because they get their money in other ways that we're not allowed to. Well, 15 of the top, 15 of the most populous counties, eight of them use this tax. Seven of them don't. Warren County doesn't. And they're, they're the most similar to us because they're, they've got a transit college community. Now, they also do have, have you uh, looked manufacturing at their total revenues, such as Corvette. Have that? you looked at their total revenues of what they bring in versus what yeah. the mass I haven't, but there are 40,000 more people. <clears throat> their their industrial is way more too. All that down on them can Get right, because the city's spaghetti and, annex. And exactly. Shane, just to make sure you know that um, in 2018 when we were doing the healing center, we hired Commonwealth Economics mm -hmm. that actually did um, a, a study and research on insurance premium tax. I don't know if you're familiar with John Ferris or not, right. uh, but John actually, we hired his firm to help us through that, to identify that. And at the time, we were looking at a 10% insurance premium tax that, that he did do projections for. And at that time, it was estimated to bring in $5 million. Okay. Um, see, see, that's a reasonable answer. That, that makes more sense. Than, and so 5%. You, we, you, we used a guesstimate. Because when I look at the range of rates, they're from 2% to 10%. Some of them, they vary among insurance classes. They may charge 3% for auto and 5% for home. Or they may exempt entire categories of coverage, such as uh, uh, thoroughbreds and fate accounts. I had a lengthy conversation with the, the uh, supervisor of the Department of Insurance that oversees this program, and it was uh, informative to me. But I guess my point is you, got, you do have time to further delve into this issue and make sure that you're getting it, that you're getting it right. Because the worst thing to me is say, 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 it does, say you only need $2 million and it raises $9 million. Well, that's revenue for you. That's good. But that's... $7 million out of the rural Madison County County's pockets that, we, that we're going to be obligated to annually or else we go to jail. Now, I'm going to pay it because I don't like jail, but 
I just, I just, uh, I urge you to pump the brakes on it a little bit. Take a month, vote on it in January after after you're confident that you've done all that 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 you've done all the research and due diligence that you can. That's all I've got to say. Thank you, Shane. Appreciate I, it. I got a question, Shane. Yes, sir. Where did you find that uh, site that you just read? Kentucky Department of Insurance. Okay. And it's. <clears throat> Were they able to give you an answer to the, what the estimate was? That they I didn't ask because that's not their job. They're not economists. They're bureaucrats that process, process. They, but they guide us on when, when you when you get ready to do an insurance premium tax, those are the people we answer to and those are the people that we ask. And their answer to us was, we can't give you a guess. You know, we can't give you an estimate of what. Because it, it differs, just like the laws differ for the county of Madison on what we can collect in occupation tax from what another county can collect. It's the same thing on, on all the different aspects that go into well, how much insurance you're going to collect. Right. That's why. That's why I suggest. That's why I'm suggesting engage some outside expertise that is familiar with providing these types of support. And I feel like we did when we asked John Ferris back when we we've been investigating. We didn't just all of a sudden decide to do an interest rate tax. And we've been investigating this since we did the healing center since we proposed it a year and a half ago. So it's not. I don't know. Been it, a lot of research. I don't know, and that and that explanation makes sense to me um, more than we kind of look like Bullitt County, so. We'll go with what their tax rate is. But to answer your your question, Mr. Combs, um, it says under the section on collection fees, pursuant to KRS 91A0804, a reasonable collection fee may be charged and retained by the insurance company or its agent. The collection fee shall not be more than 15% of the LGPT collected and remitted to the local government or 2% of the taxable premium whichever is less. That was 0804? That's KRS 91A.084. Four. Four. And, K and 806 KAR 2 colon 150. Thanks, Shane. Thanks, Appreciate Shane. it. Anybody else? <clears throat> yes, sir. Like I like one of you trying to do the best he can, and I understand the job that you has got. But hey, sir, before you, I appreciate those first comments. Uh, would you just please state your name, please? Daryl Turner. Daryl Turner. Yes, thank you. And the reason I'm up here is because there are people out there that can't afford this insurance premium. I draw 14. We got 16 dollar raise out of our pension this year. Gas went up from 231 to 259 coming down here. Everything goes up. We don't go up. I, we don't make, I got, like I told you, $16 what I come up with. Now, if people making $100,000 a year, you take 1.6%, that means a lot more money. But the people that's making $1,400 a month, $12,000, don't get no money. Because you go down there and buy biscuit and gravy, McDonald's, they cost you three forty nine. You can't even eat. It's getting a poor a poor person ain't got to change. Now I've worked all my life to make a living for to feed my family and things. And I can't do it now because it's getting to a point to where the taxes is eating me up. I pay a property taxes. Look you can't even buy a new car. You if you pay taxes on the car. It's gonna break you up. You license one, it's gonna break you up. Everything you do, it, it, it's tax, 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 tax. You can't afford it all the time. Something's gonna to have to be done to where we can live. The seniors, people. I mean, it's it's getting to be a point where seniors are not gonna make it. Now I just tell you, it's gonna to get to a point where things are gonna happen sooner or later. It's like the people coming over here from out of the United States and we take care of everyone and buying them Medicare for everybody and food stamps and everything for everybody. You can't do that. You've got to pe take care of your people in the United States first. I mean, it's getting to a point where everything's just getting out of hand. 
we're going to have to take and try our best to reel things in. And I appreciate you and all up here trying your best. That ain't what I'm up here to be smart with. We tried the last time with the raise, tax raise. We we come up with no tax raise. And then they turn around and it ain't three or four minutes later, they come up with another tax. I mean, it's just tax, 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 and we can't afford it all the way. Something's going to have to be done. But I appreciate you working. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Appreciate it. Anybody else? Good morning, Patty. Good morning. How are you? State your name, please. My name is Patty Wild. Uh, I appreciate what Tommy read. I do feel I agree with the gentleman that said, could we not wait? If you all have till March, why do you have to make the decision today? My grandmother once told me the worst decisions you make are in haste. I know she's saying that maybe you all have looked at all this for several years. I'm not saying you haven't. But if you have a few, you're saying you're going to sell property. How do you know what revenue that will bring in? It's like you're making a decision. I know you're shaking your head. <laughs> Maybe the property won't bring in much, but we don't know. You haven't sold it yet. You don't know what income is going to come from that. What would it hurt to maybe the citizens? I take responsibility for me, not for anyone else. But as a citizen, do I feel like I've been here to listen to your all's concerns? No, I take fault in that. But now that citizens are becoming more aware, are wanting to get more engaged, why can't you all make us more of the process? I know you want to, some people have some, maybe what you all think are crazy ideas, they post them on Facebook, but why can't we be more of a sit down meeting group that tries to come up with other ways other than raising taxes? Again, I know personally, probably I can afford to pay them. Do I want to? I'm telling you no, I don't want to because I agree with the elderly gentleman that we are being taxed to death. Every time we turn around as a business, there's another tax and we're a small business we're not a huge corporation you build you know what it's like there's not a lot of fat out there and it's hard and i know you talk about you're cutting jobs well what do you think we have to do when taxes get raised and then we're at the crunch of being able to pay our employees we have to cut employees i'm sorry that's part of business that's why it's called business you can't let it become personal you can't let it become that, well, we don't want to let this person go. They've been here 10 years. Well, if we have to keep paying taxes, employees that have been with us for almost 20 years are going to be gone. So is it fair to say to me, I have to cut my employees, but you don't have to look at your employees? Is that fair? I don't think so. I think if it's a reduction in pay, I know it's hard to go down on pay, easier to go up than down. I understand that, again, with the business. But has that been looked at? Has some of the salaries are maybe cutting back on some salaries. I mean, I don't know. I'm not there. I'm not trying to say you're wasteful with that. I'm just saying there's, there's got to be other ways. And again, I know with the tax that got voted down, I wish that you all had been there to see the people that actually came in and signed the petition. It was the elderly, the ones that were coming in with canes and on walkers that were saying, we don't have it we will lose their homes. Those people are who I'm here for. I do feel like that the elderly, where do they come up with their money when this goes through? Where are they supposed to go get these funds? He's right. I've, with my mother, I did her budget. She didn't get an increase. If she got an increase in Social Security, guess what went up? Medicare. So they took her funds that she got for the increase to pay for her Medicare. She didn't get an increase. She didn't even get two dollars a year increase she drew eight hundred dollars a month i'd like to see any of us in here live on eight hundred dollars a month pay a thirteen hundred dollar tax bill a year a thirteen hundred dollar insurance bill a year and try to make ends meet you can't it's not possible the way she made ends meet was through me and mark and their family donating money to her some families don't have that so again i agree with the other gentleman if you can wait why can't we try to go to other routes other than this tax increase? 
but again I'm not here to criticize you I don't think it's fair to criticize anyone on a computer if you have something to say to them in my personal opinion that you don't like say it to them face to face so that's all I have to say okay thank you Patty appreciate it anybody else this time all right Seeing those, are there any further comments from Ashes? Yes, I have another comment. Sure. Everybody that's in this courtroom today, <coughs> I thank you because at least you cared enough to come up here, whether you're for it or against it. Now, I've heard both sides of it. Well, you have it during the day. You can't come to work. I don't care. You made whatever arrangement you had to make. At least you come to say you cared about it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, Glenn, <clears throat> if this thing passed today, didn't didn't you say that it'd be August before we see any money from it? No, it'll be it'll be October, it'll be October before we see. October, okay. okay. It'll take effect July first. The insurance yeah. companies will start collecting it. The end of the quarter on nine thirty, uh, mm -hmm. it's due by ten thirty one. Glenn, how will that affect or see <clears throat> some people pay? I guess some people do buy by the quarter, but if it fell in between, how would that affect? If it's an annual, if they pay it annually, it'll just be whatever quarter that it falls into. So we're not guaranteed a, a, a set amount that it's going to be an even amount each quarter because there may be some insurances that are all due. It's just when the renewal hits. Yeah, it's just whenever their renewal hits. So, you know, one quarter we may bring in 750000 the next quarter we may bring in 900000 or 500 or It's not a set amount. Just when, well, they, when they pay their insurance. I, okay, I understand. I had one agent tell me, he said, uh, I know it's a tough decision for you all, but he said, how do you think it makes me feel? He said, we're the ones going to get the blame. And he's right. The insurance company is the one going to get the blame. Right? Because they're the one putting it on. They're already collecting it on City of Bury and City of Richmond, well, so there's I, not, probably 50% of the people's I, already I, paying it. I agree. I understand that. But what I'm saying is they're going to get the blunt of it because they're going to be the one putting it on. We have property tax, we have insurance premium tax, and we have occupational tax. That's the only ways that the county has to make money. I understand, Glenn, but what I'm trying to make a point is uh, it's not just going to, they, they're not going to just say, well, I blame that court. They're going to blame that insurance agent because he's the one going to have to collect it. I don't disagree with you. Well, just, I, I'm just right. trying to make a point. At our present rate, when does our money run out? Our present rate, our money will be when running out September. by the October, September, October of yeah, 2020. September. When do our savings run out? That is that's, our savings. That's our savings. That's it. You know, the premiums going up and all that. Uh, listen, you're not telling me nothing. My mother's secondary insurance went up $77 a month. That's over $900 a year. Do you know who she got to complain to? Me. She's got one choice. Pay it or cancel it. That's the choice. That's her choice. Now, Patty, thank you. Thank you for coming. And thank you what you do for your family. Because that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my retirement. I'm retiring in May. I've made that known more than once. And I'm going to take my retirement and make up whatever difference I have to to keep my mother afloat. That's what I'm going to do. That's what family does. That's what the world we live in today. Listen. The war on drugs rages on. We did not create this. The jail over there is full. $100,000 a month we're paying out. <clears throat> jail reform? Hey, that, that sounds great to me. Only what does jail reform really mean? What does jail reform really mean? There's a bill in... <coughs> The Senate was submitted last year to raise the level. If you still over $500 in the state of Kentucky right now, you go to jail. They're wanting to raise that to $2,000. What's that mean? That means if they break into your house or your house or your house, they're now going to be able to take $2,000 worth of your stuff 
Hey, guess what? What are you going to do then? I don't know about you. I sold my house. I now live in a duplex. But what that meant was, was I had a $1,000 deductible. I'm going to have to pay $1,000 of my $2,000 and still go buy my stuff back. That, that makes great sense. Let's give all our criminals a pass for $1,500. dollars i will go up there because that's what people want done. They want jail reform. But I'll tell you personally, I am not for jail reform. If you break the law, go to jail. You asked a question that you wanted to answer. Or was that rhetorical? Yes, it was. Yes. All right. Anything else? All right. Seeing nothing. Seeing nothing. Color roll, please. <coughs> Master Barger? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Bachman? Yes. Master Combs? No. Judge Taylor? Yes. Thank you, everybody. Uh, next is resolution 1936. This is the authorization to sell county property. Morning. Today I'm presenting on resolution 19-36, a resolution for the sale of property in Dropbox. You can see all the supplemental documents that I'm referencing. Um, whereas Mass County Fiscal Court wishes to sell the Battlefield Golf Course as surveyed by the Madison County Surveyor and identified in said survey as item G1, G2, G3, G4, G5, G6, and G7 as found on attachment A and supported with the legal descriptions in attachment B. In accordance with KRS 67.0802, the use at the time of acquisition was as a golf course. The property is being sold in the best interest of the taxpayer to assist in the financial crisis being faced by the county. The property shall be sold by sealed bid with a minimum set no less than the appraised value of the property. And whereas the Mass County Fiscal Court wishes to sell the residential property as surveyed by the Mass County Surveyor and identified in said survey as item 8 as found on attachment A and supported with the legal description in attachment C. In accordance with KRS 67.0802, the property is a residential property that was acquired as part of the original purchase of the golf course and previously used as rental property. The property is being sold in the best interest of the taxpayer to assist with the financial crisis being faced by the county. The property shall be sold by sealed bid with the minimum set no less than the appraised value of the property. And whereas Mass County Fiscal Court wishes to sell the vacant lots as surveyed by the Mass County Surveyor and identified in said survey as item 9, 10, and 11 as found on attachment A and supported with the legal description in attachment B. In accordance with KRS 67.0802, the property was, required, was acquired as vacant lots. The property is being sold in the best interest of the taxpayer to assist in the financial crisis being faced by the county. The property shall be sold by sealed bid with the minimum set no less than the appraised value of the property. And whereas Mass County Fiscal Court wishes to sell Will Green Lake, as described in attachment E, as filed as deed book 218, page 247, filed in the Mass County Clerk's Office. In accordance with KRS 67.0802, the lake is currently a lake and was acquired as a lake and would be sold in the best interest of the taxpayer to assist in the financial crisis being faced by the county. The property shall be sold by sale bid with the minimum set no less than the appraised value of the property. And whereas the Mass County Fiscal Court wishes to sell property, the old school building on New Road, as described in attachment F, as filed in deed book 50, page 438, in the Madison County Clerk's Office, in accordance with KRS 67.082, 0802, excuse me, the lot was previously used as a schoolhouse for the Madison County school system. The property is being <coughs> sold in the best interest of the taxpayer to assist in the financial crisis being faced by the county. The property shall be sold by sealed bid with a minimum set no less than the appraised value of the property. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Madison County Fiscal Court to authorize the judge executive to begin the process of placing the aforementioned properties for sale. Thank you, Colleen. Appreciate that. Uh, resolution 1936, authorization uh, to sell county property. I need a motion and a second, please. So moved. Second. I have a motion. I have a second. Uh, is there any discussion, guys? No. All right. Seeing none, call the roll, please. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Bakken? Yes. Master Combs? Yes. Master Barter? Yes. Just Taylor? Yes. Thank you, Colleen. Appreciate it. Uh, next, resolution 1937. This is a road adoption. Overlook Trail. Good morning, Willie. Good morning. 
I'd like to ask the court to uh, adopt this road into county maintenance system. It's off of its subdivision, off of uh, Old Wilderness Trail. Road can, road's 2,250 feet long, it's 16 feet wide. It's paved. I've inspected it, and it's my recommendation that we accept it. I make a motion. Second. So I have a motion and a second to approve resolution 1937, which is a road adoption of Overlook Trail, 2,250 feet by 16 foot wide. I for, it did mention he has the developers have completed all their requirements. Yes. What? Well, uh, why is it only 16 foot wide? The size of the lots. Lots. Yeah. Okay. Because I know <clears throat> normally it's 20. Yes. Sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, you asked my question. <coughs> okay. Anything else? We have a motion and second. Call the roll, please. Master Bucken? Yes. Master Cone? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Judge Taylor? Yes. Thanks, Willie. Thank you. Uh, next is the personnel as a promotion in the fire department. Chief? Good morning. How about How are you all? Good. Good. Uh, today he's not able to be with us, but I'd like to promote Ben Hall from a firefighter one to a firefighter two. He's currently making 750. This will put him at eight dollars, effective 12, 25, 2019. And what he's done is complete his 400-hour training. He's certified state Kentucky firefighter now. Thanks, Chief. If y'all approve the recommendation made by Chief for Ben Hall to promote from firefighter one to firefighter two, I need a motion and second, please. So moved. Second. Have a motion second. Any discussion? Seeing none, call the roll. Master Combs? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Bakken? Yes. Judge Taylor? Yes. Thank you all. Thanks, Chief. Uh, next, personnel is animal care. Dustin can't wait going to get ahead of me. I'm on there. He's um, good morning again. I am presenting today um, on the animal care coordinator. <coughs> As you all know, since June, I've been serving um, in the capacity of our interim animal shelter um, director. And so our committee is making a recommendation for a hire of Ms. Catherine Tibbs um, at a rate of $36,075 with a start date of January 6. Ms. Tibbs comes to us with um, a background in dispatching as well as a master's in animal um, care. So we recommend her hire. Thank you, Colleen. If y'all approve uh, the hire of Catherine Tibbs uh, as our animal care coordinator uh, starting on January the 6th, 2020 at a rate of $36,075. I need a motion and second, please. Motion is steady. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, call the roll, please. Master Barger? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Botkin? Yes. Master Combs? Yes. Judge Taylor? Yes. Thank you. Next is personnel is CSEP. Good morning, Dustin. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'd like to uh, ask the uh, or provide the court a recommendation to hire uh, Kobe Baldwin as our CSEP uh, administrative assistant. Um, she would start off uh, at sixteen forty-one an hour, uh, starting January the sixth, twenty twenty. A committee of uh, Colleen and Jennifer Hitch uh, sat down uh, and uh, interviewed the folks, <coughs> and uh, this is who they uh, recommended. So on that recommendation, uh, I'd ask the court to uh, for the permission to hire Kobe Baldwin. Thank you, Dustin. If uh, there's, a first, there's, a, there's a motion and a second for the recommendation of Dustin Heiser. I move. Second. So, Dustin, this is a position that's... Uh, Funded by the CSEP, it's not county funded. That's yes, correct. sir. This is 100 percent CSEP yeah. funded. So, a motion by John, second by Roger. Yeah. Any other discussion? Seeing none, call the roll, please. Master Tudor. Yes. Master Bakken. Yes. Master Combs. Yes. Master Berger. Yes. Judge Taylor. Yes. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Dustin. Appreciate it. Next is a couple appointments to the Mass County Extension Office um, or Extension Board. Uh, the first recommendation would be for the agriculture representative, a board member, and that would be Irvin Yoder. I would recommend to the court that we appoint Irvin Yoder to the uh, extension board as an ag representative. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, his appointment will expire December 31st, 2023, just FYI. 
Is there any further discussion? Have the motion. Say, seeing none, call the roll. Master Bakken? Yes. Master Combs? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Judge Taylor? Yes. Uh, the next appointment to the uh, extension board would be Meredith Reed as the 4-H representative to the board. Do I have a motion and a second to approve Meredith Reed to the extension board as the 4-H representative? So move. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, the appointment will expire December 31st, 2023 as well. Any further discussion? Seeing none, call the roll. Master Combs? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Bakken? Yes. Judge Taylor? Uh, yes. Uh, next is judge's report. Uh, just a <coughs> couple of announcements. Uh, Madison Central is hosting their Christmas Classic Basketball Tournament December 19th through the 22nd. Uh, there will be eight teams from Central Kentucky and Eastern Kentucky participating in the tournament. Uh, so if you are interested in good basketball, it is a, it is a good tournament every year. Uh, the Richmond Police Department's Feed the Families Food Drive continues through the end of 2019 at Richmond's Walmart. Please leave non-perishable food items at the Richmond Police Cruiser to help the disadvantaged all year. Uh, the courthouse uh, and its related offices will be closed Tuesday, December 24th and Wednesday, December 25th for the Christmas holiday and Tuesday, December 31st and Wednesday, January 1st for the New Year's holiday. Uh, also want to um, announce and I'm proud to welcome back uh, the All-A Classic basketball tournament to the EKU's Alumni Coliseum January the 26th through January the 20th, sorry, January 22nd through January 26th. Uh, and if you would like to volunteer um, for the tournament, please uh, reach out to local Richmond Tourism. Uh, it is a great event from uh, high school teams, <coughs> smaller high school uh, basketball teams across the, the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Next is comments from magistrates. Tom? I just had two, Judge. The, um, as we've seen over and over and over, uh, last night I talked to my son several times, a real police officer, roads are flooded everywhere. If you see a flooded road, there may be barrels there. The county may have gotten there, they may have not gotten there. Please don't try to drive across a flooded road. You have no idea what's under it. There may be road there, but there may be nothing there. And uh, second, uh, as it's Christmas, even today, we're able to get here and sit here and be here simply because there's a soldier, sailor, airman, a marine, or a coast guardsman in every country on the face of this earth. They won't be home for Christmas. They'll be without their families, many of them, and I just ask that you uh, remember them in, their, uh, in your prayers this holiday season. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. John? I'd just like to wish everybody a happy uh, holidays, Merry Christmas, and Spend time with your family, enjoy it, uh, and just remember what Christmas is all about. Yep. It's the birth of our, son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yep. Thanks, John. Ross? I was going to say about the same thing. Uh, just remember the reason for the season. Merry Christmas to everybody. Thanks, Ross. Larry? Well, Judge, uh, <clears throat> I got up fairly early this morning. I had a, a real bad slip on uh, one of my roads and of course Willie's going to as soon as the court meeting's over he's going to go look at it but we've got two out there now but I've got a feeling what, yeah you know as I talk to you we may have to have some yep. uh, emergency money on this I mean it's a it's a big slip and just black top yeah it's a shame how, how long is it you know uh, it's probably about 150 feet but it's 300 foot down <laughs> I mean, it's straight down. We just fixed one on the other side, what, two years ago, Willie? It's been longer than that. Okay. And, and I'm sure that's what we're going to have to do to this one. But I just, and I'll tell you what, when it rains, it poured, and it did pour. Yeah. So there's no question about that. But other than that, Judge, I, uh, I'm just glad to be here. Glad you're here, man. Kenny, you got anything? No, sir. Kenny? No, sir. Sure? No, sir. Uh, comments from department heads? Anybody today? No? Comments from the audience? Yeah, sure. Hi, I, my name is Mary McNey, and I just have a question. Why do you adopt roads like you did over Overlook Trail? Why do you adopt those from the subdivision? Um, I'm not sure what you're meaning. Why did we adopt them? Well, the, the I, I guess mean, I just don't understand. A, de a developer comes in. I mean, that's how counties get their, their <coughs> roads 
in our role plan. A uh, developer comes in and develops a subdivision. Right, and it's, it's and been there several through, years. I live back there. Goes through planning and zoning and gets approved. And then once the once the uh, development meets a certain amount of, uh, houses. amount of houses or percentage complete, that right. developer can make all the final. Well, that's probably not even 10% complete yet, that subdivision. No, I would I would disagree with that. Mm, okay. Yeah, I who, mean, we can, we can pull out a plat and see all the houses that are right. in there. And there's not very many. Mm -hmm. no. So well, who took the, care of the paving it? Lot, the, but they're bigger lots. They're not your normal right. one oh, acre I know. lot or whatever. Yeah. Oh, I know. I pass by that place yeah. half a dozen times a day. Okay. Um, so who took care of paving that? that the line? developer does. It did. So, so the county didn't have to pay the Allen Company to pave it this no. last no. time? Okay. No, that's a rule in our planning and zoning regs that a developer has to do its final obligations, whether that be making sure that storm drains are cleaned out or okay. uh, put in properly or the final coat of blacktop is one of those things. The developer has to do all that before the county would accept okay. it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was just curious. There is an exception to that. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. That is, there's an exception to that, and that is if the developer goes bankrupt, as happened in Battlefield, yeah. the county had to go in and take that over. We spent over, because they only had the first layer of blacktop down, we spent over $300,000 in their last year of blacktop and road. Is that how the county acquired so many properties there? No, mm -hmm. that, I don't have to know how that was done. That was done way before we ever got here. Yeah. Uh -huh. you, you're correct in what you said, but now we require a little bit heavier bond. So if that does happen, then you as a taxpayer are covered. Oh, now okay. we do, but there, yeah, in, now. In, the, in the instance of Welchwood, which is right above where I used to live, off of, of uh, the developer put up a bond 20 years go by, and they call a bond, well, what's he do? Blacktop's gone up, skyrocketed over 20 years. Well, you just keep my bond. That'll be all right. Okay. I was just More curious. I, didn't know, too. I didn't, didn't know how all that worked. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else from the audience? <coughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll make this quick. Um, just, just say your name. Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Shane O'Donnell. Yeah. Um, I kind of look at uh, criminal justice reform a little differently. I was at a, a legislative event in, at Griffin Gate yesterday that was rep well represented by uh, the delegation in Frankfurt. And they're facing a $1.2 billion budget shortfall this biennium. And it's a budget session. Uh, along with all the pressures that are going to be added to the proposed budget from Governor Bashir, um, because of his you know, promises to increase teacher pay, they're looking at cost savings measures. And one of those is criminal justice reform, pretrial release reform, and cash bail reform. And from the conversations that we engaged in yesterday, those seem to be really picking up momentum this session and have a pretty good chance of at least making it to the floor. Now, because of the drug situation here that you keep alluding to or, or identifying, <clears throat> I think Madison County is positioned really well to be a poster child for that type of reform that can give you some real relief quickly. So I would encourage you to work closely with the delegation to beat down their doors and offer to testify in front of uh, Chairman P Petrie's uh, committee. You know, get involved in the process and really tell our story. So, that's it. Thanks, Shane. Appreciate the comments. Uh, I do want to comment back to that uh, just to let you know. About three weeks ago, I did testify about jail reform, bail reform, how that we needed to do something at the local level because it's killing us. So, um, so I was there in Frankfurt uh, about three weeks ago. And I talked to a Representative Frazier and uh, Representative Goforth and left a message for Representative Brenda this past week and didn't get the feel that there was going to be much movement on it. But they were on their way to the caucus, so who knows how it came, what came from that. I haven't talked to them since they got out of that. That may be the top priority. I hope it is. And, and one of the things I want to just comment here at the end before we close is, is that my door is truly always open. Uh, I'm open for conversations. Um, just come call me, my cell phone number, um, to uh, to find out facts, to, to, to know what we as a, as, a, as a county government administration do on a daily basis. As, you know, Shane, you and I have had many conversations uh, to, together because um, uh, I want people to be educated. 
I feel like there are a lot of things on a daily basis that we're doing to make sure that we're making good decisions and the best decisions that we have. And we are going down these paths. Um, and so uh, feel free to call me. Um, my cell number, I give it out all the time. Uh, I got a text uh, uh, Sunday night at 1038 from a battlefield uh, resident because of concerned about flooding. Um, I do take my job very serious, um, and um, we do have to make tough decisions, and it's hard. Um, but we do have a we, we do have an obligation to make sure that the county is in good financial position. I mean, it's unfortunate. Um, it's unfortunate that we're having to do what we're doing, but um, I look forward to doing all those things. Shane is to is to continue to fight for criminal justice reform. Um, I would love to be able in a couple years come back and say, hey, we can lower the insurance premium tax percentage down because we have continued to fight and make good decisions financially on a daily basis. And we've continued to cut wasteful spending um, just like we've done as a court for the past five years. So, um, uh, but a lot of these things, decisions that, that, that we have to make based off of KRS, you know, take time. And so sometimes we have to plan for our future and to make sure that we're not uh, not standing there in a bad situation because we waited too long. So, anything else as we close? Uh, last is uh, I need a motion and a second to pay the claims and approve the transfers. <coughs> Have a motion and a second. Call the roll, please. Master Barger? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Bakken? Yes. Master Cohen? Yes. Just Taylor? Yes. Our next meeting, and I do want to make, uh, make sure everybody <coughs> realizes this because our next meeting is actually going to be on the first. Tuesday of January, not the second, um, and that has already been voted on by our court in our in our yearly calendar. Um, but it will be January the seventh, two thousand twenty, and it will be in Berea still because it's our first meeting of the of an odd month. Um, but January seventh will be our first meeting of twenty twenty this year in Berea. I need a motion to second to adjourn. So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Bakken? Yes. Master Combs? Yes. Master Berger? Yes. Just Taylor? Yes.